Hey everybody, welcome to another gnarly lesson time. And today I want to talk about is what is Apache Iceberg, which is, well, a table format. But again, every table format kind of has a different scope to their project. And Apache Icebergs has a really sort of specific scope for very good reason. And it really focuses on specifically the specification. It's a table format specification, meaning it basically the main crux of the project is the standard in which you write metadata. Okay. Um, and which you read metadata. Okay. So basically there's, there's these files that are part of the Apache iceberg metadata, which we'll cover in a future video. And that's essentially designing how those standards work and what's the point of these different fields and the different files is this is what Apache iceberg is. Okay. It's incumbent on any tool that wants to take leverage the format to then sort of implement using the format. Okay. But to make it easier, um, the format, what it does is that it does provide libraries for reading and writing the metadata. Okay. Not for reading the files per se. Okay. So for like actually reading, uh, you know, doing the actual scanning and querying and analytics that'd be left up to whatever query engine you prefer something like a Dremio or a DuckDB or, um, you know, you name it, uh, Apache, Spark, et cetera, they would handle the actual scanning or analytics, um, basically. But what happens is that you may have a file, you know, a table that's made up of a thousand parquet files. The Apache iceberg metadata is going to be the metadata that's going to allow those tools to understand the table and to smartly plan a scan of the table. So then say, Hey, these thousand files, but I really only need to scan 10 of them. Okay. And it can do that using the metadata. So to make more tools, to make it possible for more tools to take advantage of Apache iceberg, Apache iceberg has certain libraries. Okay. So originally there's the Java iceberg library, which allows you to be able to read Apache iceberg metadata to write Apache iceberg metadata. Okay. And again, you can read that metadata in order to form a plan of like, Hey, these are the files I need to scan. And then again, the, whatever tool would then take it from there. So the idea is that any query engine that wants to suddenly add Apache iceberg support can do so very easily, assuming that that program is written in Java. Now, not all programs are written in Java. Okay. So this is why you're trying to see new, uh, implementations of those libraries, uh, come into existence. So now there's like a Python, uh, implementation that's kind of far along, then there's also a Rust and a Go implementation that are in early stages, and I'm sure there'll be more to come uh, as time goes on. Okay, but what Apache Iceberg is, in, it isn't a storage engine. Okay, so it's not a, a place where you store your data. Okay, it's not an execution engine. It's not the query engine. So again, it's not Dremio. It's not the thing that's actually going to go scan the files for you. It's not a service. Okay, for Apache Iceberg to work, you don't have to actually run anything perpetually. It's just a way, the way you write a handful of files, um, and then tools can then read those files and understand what that table is. Okay. It's also not a file format. Okay. Oftentimes I hear people talk about table formats as if they were file formats. Like, Hey, I saved it as iceberg over parquet. You're still saving it as parquet. Your actual data will still be saved generally as parquet files, because it's going to be the most really the best file type for general analytics that there is. But what's going to happen is that when you save your data as an Apache iceberg table, that on top of the actual data saved in parquet files, you're going to have these layers of metadata co-located with it or generally located with it. Uh, that'll provide tools, the ability to more smartly determine which of those parquet files to scan and how to, you know, track updates and do more fine grained things that you can't do with just parquet files on their own. So table formats usually enhance parquet files. They are not a replacement for parquet files. So again, my name is Alex Merced. I'll see you all later. Have a good one.